Hello, Matthew Ziegelman, Mayo Clinic urologist, back again with another Mayo Clinic Men's Health Moment. This time, I'd like to talk to you about medical treatments for Peyronie's disease. Treatment for Peyronie's disease is determined by several factors, including how bothered you are by your symptoms, how severe your symptoms are, how long the symptoms have been present, and whether you have other concerns such as erectile dysfunction. Now, if the symptoms are not particularly bothersome, observation alone is reasonable. However, many patients desire active treatment. Here, we will discuss various types of medical therapy, including oral and topical treatments. Medical therapy has really been the mainstay of Peyronie's disease treatment dating back to the mid-18th century. That was when Francois de la Peyronie, for whom Peyronie's disease is actually named, described treating this condition with mercury. Now, we certainly do not use mercury to treat Peyronie's disease these days, but since that time, many different oral and topical medications have been tried. The way that most of these agents work is by breaking down scar tissue. These are known as antifibrotics or reducing inflammation, and these are known as anti-inflammatories. Oral medications are the most common initial treatment that is recommended by most urologists, at least historically. And we can see this by a study shown here by Sullivan and colleagues in 2015. When they surveyed urologists, more than 80% reported using oral therapies as the first-line treatment for Peyronie's disease. And the most common agent that has historically been prescribed is called vitamin E, and we'll talk about this in just a moment. Now to cut to the point, there is no strong data to support the use of oral medications to improve the symptoms associated with Peyronie's disease, such as curvature. Most of the studies that have been performed to date have significant flaws. We frequently use medications like ibuprofen, which is an anti-inflammatory, to treat pain, but other types of medications that are used to treat symptoms such as curvature or shortening do not have strong supportive data. Many of the medications that have been prescribed on a regular basis, such as vitamin E, tamoxifen, procarbazine, omega-3 fatty acids, these agents actually do not work, and there is data to support this. In fact, the American Urological Association Peyronie's Disease Guideline Panel does not recommend using these medications for Peyronie's disease. Now, there are other types of medications that may be prescribed, like colchicine, potaba, coenzyme Q10, also known as ubiquinol, pentoxyphylline, and L-citrulline and L-arginine. But once again, there's no strong data in human studies to support these medications. There are some intriguing studies in animal models, for example, with pentoxyphylline, and there are many experts that will prescribe this medication because it tends to be well tolerated. The most common oral medication that I prescribe for Peyronie's disease is actually Tadalafil, also known as generic Cialis. Rectal dysfunction is seen in about 30 to 50% of patients with Peyronie's disease, and Tadalafil can help address the erectile dysfunction. There are also some studies suggesting a potential antifibrotic or anti-scar property to this medication, and it's well tolerated and now generic, so it's quite affordable. So in addition to oral medications, there are several different topical medications that have been studied. The idea here being that these medications would be absorbed through the skin and make their way down to the scar tissue. Medications like verapamil, some types of steroids, and more recently something called H100 gel have been studied. I would say that once again, we do not have a strong level of evidence to support these topical medications. It was once thought that using electrical current could actually help deliver these medications in greater, to a greater extent to the scar tissue. We call this electromotive therapy, but this is very time intensive. And once again, there's, there's not good evidence that this makes a difference in treatment outcomes, so this is not recommended. Shockwave therapy is another option. This is using a device to, to target sound waves at the scar tissue. There is evidence that shockwave therapy can help patients who have severe pain related to their Peyronie's disease, but there is no evidence that it helps with curvature. So this does not help with penile curvature. Radiation therapy is used historically, but should not be used because of the potential for side effects.
Finally, there's been a recent trend by some healthcare practitioners in the community to offer what we term regenerative therapies, such as stem cell therapy or platelet-rich plasma. Now, these are, are injected into the penis, and the thought here is that they promote blood vessel growth or nerve regeneration. Unfortunately, we do not have any strong evidence that these therapies work, particularly in Peyronie's disease, and they can be extremely costly and are out of pocket because insurance companies do not cover these. So it is currently recommended that these therapies only be administered as part of a research protocol until we have evidence that they actually make a difference. So be wary of the benefits that are advertised by some clinics that offer these therapies. So to summarize, medical therapy is an option for Peyronie's disease patients. But at this time, we do not have good evidence that using oral or topical therapy alone will benefit symptoms such as curvature or penile length loss. If patients are to receive a benefit with oral therapies, I suspect it is likely during that early phase, that period of active inflammation. And this may be most beneficial if used in combination with other treatments like stretching or injections. Shockwave can help with penile pain but should not be used to treat penile curvature. And regenerative therapies like stem cells and platelet-rich plasma should only be used under research protocols until we know that they are benefiting patients because of the high associated costs. This concludes another Mayo Clinic Men's Health Moment, this time discussing medical therapy for Peyronie's disease. If you have any interest in scheduling a consultation for Peyronie's disease, please contact us at the number included on the screen below. Thanks for your attention and have a great day.